One of the cool elements of the Pagoda or the 280SL is the top. One of the things I read in the design brief, they wanted to make sure that the journalists could come out to race day, park their 280SL on the side of the racetrack, climb on top of the roof, get their cameras out and take pictures of the race that day. And it's just a kind of cool little design brief component to that roof that it's got more than one function to it. There's a crash test, but they also want to make sure that a big German guy could sit on top of that roof and take pictures. You know, there is a connection to us in the architecture that functional requirement generates a beauty out of something that you didn't expect. My name is Daniel Monti. I drive a 1969 Mercedes-Benz 280SL. This 280SL has been in the family for uh, 30 years. I remember driving it in high school. Actually, my friend owned it. A few years later, his father was selling it and my father decided to buy it. It's just been sort of shared by the whole family since that time. So one of my favorite views of the car, being an architect, I call it the elevation, and it's, it's a dead-on view of the side of the car because of the proportions of the body. It's really kind of elegant and streamlined compared to how much glass there is. So you don't have a really tall side door panel. It's really thin and crisp and clean. It's very timeless in a sense. I really appreciate cars are sort of, they're elegant, they're simple, they don't have a lot of extra fluff. The Pagoda is the same way that, and it's kind of a class change at a certain time when it came in. Playing that balance of being forward thinking, but yet kind of a timeless design. Uh, our architecture tries to be straightforward with basic principles that you can appreciate uh, in the future. Basic ideas that are timeless in their nature and that's how we hopefully create architecture that's pushing the boundaries but not outdated in five years. For the Walnut House, one of the things that we were trying to bring back a sensibility or an idea was that I remember being at you know parks growing up and there's these beautiful eucalyptus trees, that dappled light that comes down. And I was trying to bring that, that idea back to the architecture here in Los Angeles. So we wrapped the whole building with these metal panels to create this sort of beautiful dappled light that kind of moves through the house. It creates shade so the house stays cooler and it helps dissipate all the heat that comes, you know, comes out uh, on a sunny day. So it's got this functional quality to it that most people don't expect. One of the ways I see blending of form and function in the pagoda is the pagoda top. That top is it's kind of an elegant design, it's got a crease towards the top. There's a functional requirement that it needed to be rigid if it ever decided to flip over, and the crease is kind of the beauty of it. So there's a functional requirement that created this formal beauty out of it. One of the cool elements of that house that is form and function kind of together is we had all these circles that were cut out of these metal panels. So the functional aspect was how are we going to use them? So in the staircase, we ended up welding them all together to create the handrail. And then that handrail creates a protective barrier from falling down, but it's also this beautiful sculptural thing. Living in this particular house, I've learned a tremendous amount, more than I've learned in 10 houses. And it's all about small, subtle details. A good car designer, they need to drive their own cars once, just trying it out and testing it with your own hands is it's really the difference. I think vintage car enthusiasts are enthusiastic about cars and all these other sort of ancillary design features, kind of like watches, houses, or whatever. Uh, it's because there's just like a, a well-designed components to stuff, right? You look at a beautiful car and, and you love the engineering of it. And, and a, a wonderfully designed watch has a beautiful engineering to it. It's got a great proportion. It's got a beautiful little bezel and those little, little details that add up. And in our architecture, we do the same thing. It's just, there's a big picture beauty to it, but there's like these little details that kind of bring it together. The 280SL is a fun car to drive because it's a kind of what I call a grand cruiser. You're just kind of cruising along, you're enjoying life, you're looking at the coastline, you're looking at the views. You're not out to race everybody, you're just kind of cruising along and enjoying it. It's super reliable. Every time you want to start it, it doesn't have a problem with it. It's got that beautiful German engineering that always is there. 
I don't have any children, but my brother has three daughters, and I hope that the heritage gets passed on to them, and they are the new custodians of the car as they get older, and then they pass it on to the next generation of Montes. So hopefully it'll stay in the Monte family for many, many years.